We're talking about intellectual property. Intellectual property really relates to the intangible personal property assets of a company. It's, you know, around ideas and know-how and concepts, inventions and names. That's stuff that you can't really touch. Um, this is really represented by about four areas. Patents, trademarks, copyrights, and trade secrets. The first three here are what are called registrable. You can obtain actual protection by going and physically filing an application with a federal office or a state office. Trade secrets, on the other hand, are something that you can't, you know, by their very nature, if you were to disclose them to someone else, they would no longer be trade secrets. Their value would disappear. And so this is non-registrable intellectual property. So when you're thinking about these concepts, remember, you may have to go and file an application and pay some money if you want the full extent of protection that accompanies these types of intellectual property. Now let's talk, what, talk about what these are. Patents. When we talk about patents, think about inventions. Think about the trinkets, the things that in engineers are making. These are, you know, they may be mechanical inventions. These may be, they may be methods. These are inventions of a functional and non-obvious nature that you've actually reduced to practice. And what does reduced to practice mean? It means you have a working model. Um, so if you have an idea in your head and you think, oh, this is the greatest idea, this is going to be the next big thing, and you want to go and protect it with a patent, well, you can't get that protection until you have made that thing work. Once you've made that thing work, the patent process is all about disclosing that patent to the United States Patent and Trademark Office, teaching them how your idea, how your invention works, and then they say, thank you for disclosing this. We're going to let everybody else in the world know about your invention. And because you've shared it with us, because we want you to share it with us, we're going to give you 20 years protection on this invention. So, that's patent. Trademarks. Trademarks are governed by the same office as the patents, the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And trademarks are all about protecting names that are associated with goods or services. It's also about um, the way, the look and feel of products that make you associate them with a brand or with a company. So this is not only about protecting the company's goodwill that they build up in a particular mark. Think about Coke. Think about all the millions and billions of dollars they've spent in building their brand. They should have some protection so that others cannot create a product that looks similar, that would confuse, you know, looks similar or has a name that's so similar that it would confuse people to believe that it's the same product. Marks are also about protecting consumers. We, you know, just like we talked about in the last example with Coke, we don't want, um, you know, Coke should be protected because of all the money they've built in their brand, but the consumer should also be protected so that when they go buy a can of Coke off the shelf, or when they go get a prescription off the shelf, they can rest assured to know that what's in that bottle is exactly what the label says it is. That it's not a counterfeit. That, you know, that Zoloft that they go grab actually has antidepressants in it and not, you know, uh, sugar pills. So trademarks are about, you know, products being what they are and who they say they are not being counterfeits. Copyrights. So copyrights are an interesting uh, breed of intellectual property. These are all about the creative arts. Think about writers, think about photographers, think about painters. All of those works, those really creative works, um, are, are really the basis of copyright. Think about publishing houses and novels and movies. Those are all about copyrights. When you hear about those distributors with, you know, and movie rights, that's copyright. Now copyrights come into existence the moment that you publish a work. And what is a work? A work is the embodiment of some kind of um, creative idea that you have, whether it's a painting. You know, if you have an idea for a painting, you can't copyright that. But the moment you put that painting on paper or on a canvas, you have a copyright in that painting at that very moment. You can, however, also extend your, 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 your copyright protection even more by registering a copyright with the United States Copyright Office. What's not copyrightable? Well, there has to be a, a certain degree of creativity 
for something to be copyrightable. So for example, a phone book. Okay, it's a work. It's something that's written down. But is there any real creativity there? No. If there is any creativity in the way that it's arranged, the way that the pages are set up alphabetically, there may be a degree of protection there. But the slightest variation of those same names and phone numbers um, would allow you to skirt the copyright protection because there's really no creativity there. This is about protecting and, and giving um, protection to those who are creating value through creativity. We write that this is self-executing because if you choose not to register a copyright, you still have those rights the moment that you publish the work. This goes with publishing websites and other things as well. Trade secrets. Trade secrets are, you know, when, when we talk about this, think about Coke's secret formula. Think about that special process that allows, you know, or think, think about Zappos.com. Zappos is able to, you can, you can buy 15 pairs of shoes from them, and they'll pay return shipping on the 14 that you don't like. How come nobody else is able to do this? They know something that nobody else does, and they're not going to be telling their competitors what this is, because this gives them a competitive advantage. So trade secrets can't be registered because the moment they become disclosed and other people know about them, they lose their value. And trade secrets are all about the processes that you take within the company to protect that information. If you don't protect this carefully and somebody leaves the company and is able to disclose this to the public, you may not be able to go back and claim this as a trade secret because you didn't do everything in your power protect this and lock it down. We're going to go through one quick example that's going to run through all of these forms of, of intellectual property. Joe's Crab Cakes. So Joe's Crab Cakes is a new business. Um, what's special about Joe's Crab Cakes is they make the fluffiest, best tasting crab cakes and consumers have come to associate that good fluffy taste with their name. So specifically, they have come up with a machine that, that combines the ingredients in such a way to make the crab cake so fluffy. No other machine in the world and no hand process can create a crab cake similar. So they have created a device that they have registered the patent with because there's so many other crab cake restaurants around that want to be able to buy this device or to license this technology. And they want to be able to preclude other people from coming in, seeing their device, and trying to reverse engineer it. So they register a patent on that particular device. They've reduced it to practice clearly because they're using it in their restaurant. So they have protection on this device for 20 years. And they can choose how other people get to use it, whether they license it or whether they say, sorry, we're going to be the only people to use this for 20 years. Trademarks. They have, copy, or they have trademarked their name or they attempted to. Joe's Crab Cakes. Remember, we talked about this being kind of a fanciful name. Well, names, because so many people have names, these cannot be trademarked. So Joe's Crab Cakes is a good example of a bad name that can't be trademarked. However, because Joe's Crab Cakes has been in existence for 10 years, and all of America knows that Joe's Crab Cakes is the one and only original fluffy and delicious crab cake, they have been able, even though their name was somewhat descriptive and uses a term that cannot be trademarked, because they've become a famous mark over time, they're able to protect their name. Next, copyrights. Joe's Crab Cakes has these enormous menus. They, they're four feet tall. And because they're four feet tall, they're so unique. Um, they're also associated with Joe's trademarks. And the way the pictures and the menu items, the way that they're listed on the menus, the way that the menu items have specific names that are so unique to Joe's, they have copyrights in those menus that are self-executing. They don't have to register with anyone. But most importantly, Joe's Crab Cakes has a special formula for their crab cakes. In fact, no one vendor provides their ingredients. They have a vendor who sends in one ingredient, another vendor who sends in another, another vendor who sends in another, and no employee gets to touch any of those ingredients at any one time. They can't know what they are. 
So no employee actually knows the formula of the crab cakes and no vendor knows the formula of the crab cakes. And every employee who gets to touch any of those has to sign a non-disclosure and non-compete agreement so that they're really locking this down to say, this is highly confidential. You can never use this again. And in fact, there are only two people in the company who have separate keys to separate safes that have only parts of the recipes. These guys have taken serious steps to make sure that their trade secrets are protected. So that if any one person ever wanted to try and take them, they could go to a court and stop them. That's the overview of intellectual property.